Hi everyone. You know, let me just make sure the sound is. <coughs> so it sounds like good. Okay, there we go. Welcome to week six. I'm recording this on Sunday and posting this on Sunday and begin tomorrow. So the topic of week six is NGOs, gap year programs, and humanitarian action. Who really benefits? Um, and you'll have a week for that. So I've just put a reply to Richelle's uh, note about assignments being uh, possibly uh, submitted later. She, she asked a question in the form, uh, the midpoint form for comments to the instructor in uh, week six. So if you want to go and look at my answers there, I've answered in, in written form, but I'm going to say it again here. You've By this stage, you've seen the bigger issues. And the ones that we're going to keep as a, you know, peeling an onion and, and looking at different layers, we're going to keep coming back to that tension, particularly between globalization and internationalization. So I know it's it, the first part of the of the course is heavy as we um, tackle definitions and the big the big concepts, but you are at the hump point of the course now where we return, we look at ancillary issues, we return to some some of the of the questions that we've looked at, and the second half is less uh, heavy in content. Um, and so that's why now you 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 know you that's less content, but you're dealing with the assignments. Um, so I don't mind if they're late, and I just want you to keep everything we've done from week two to week five clearly in your mind, because both assignment two and assignment three are going to relate to those very specific sections of the course. So don't leave it too late, because obviously the reason why the assignments are set there is that so that you remember what we've done in the course, and then we move on to slightly different things. I don't want those uh, that content to be too far away in your head. But apart from that, I'm not strict on deadlines, never been. So as long as you're not too behind um, and you feel you're keeping up, if you're not, email me and we can discuss individually. But you can really uh, set your own pace as long as you're not too far off the, the general indications of the you know, uh, alignment of questions and their uh, sort of uh, closeness to the weeks when we've discussed the content. OK, so just keep that in mind and then navigate as best as you can. So objectives for this week's. Explore NGO, gap your programs, humanitarian action. As you've seen, we're starting to tackle smaller, um, smaller topics within the major topics that we've already unpacked. And then we'll have a bit of time to discuss assignment three as well. I'm just going to give a voiceover. I think the PowerPoint is fairly explained, is fairly self-explanatory this week, but it's important for you still to um, sometimes get my voiceover so we can clarify right away. So NGOs, who benefits? We've already started discussing this, and certainly I, on purpose, put the um, the media post on the tablets, uh, innovation in tablets without you know, classrooms without teachers in India. Uh, as a meter source last week. So this conversation really started. So it's not new, but now we obviously are going to spend a week uh, being able to tackle it properly. So you've got one general reading, and that's um, open access. So you can just click on that and go to it direct. Uh, it's in your reading section at the top of Moodle as well. And then you've got some uh, lighter sort of sources. So again, um, I have replied this to Michelle. I've said at the beginning of the course, I just want to clarify, I always do this, so it's fine. Um, but don't forget, I try and teach through this universal design for learning approach. I try to give you multiple pathways. So if I take this as an example, I am assuming that certain people will tackle the lighter websites and be satisfied with that. Some people will want to go through a general article right away. Some people will be very ambitious or maybe very free this week or uh, you know, or be very interested in this and they may read everything on that slide. But it's up to you really to choose what's sufficient for you, depending on your strength, depending on time, depending on your interest to cover the topics that we cover in them. Obviously the aim is that everyone covers everything to a different degree of depth. Um, and I think, because of the diversity of the students, you will go into more depth in different sections of the course. So don't exhaust yourself always wanting to absolutely be on top of everything, read everything, master everything, because the aim here is to give you diversity and flexibility in the pathways that uh, guide you and, and engage you into the, the content. Um, so here, for example, you have lighter pieces. So you have three uh, media pieces or web pieces, which are less heavy to read if you have less time or if you prefer to, to approach it this way. So the question I have for you, I'm just going to move my camera so I can read the text. What are the main objections you're picking up in these sources to the way NGOs are operating in the global south within the content of education? So you already um, discussed this slide, or some of you have started discussing this in the media last week. And initially, the NGOs had an Indian group with a lack of teachers. 
Now he will be able to argument and maybe when he was things. And then you have a stream on the thread on the virtual form for this that means you um, to uh, reply to this, contribute to this. Again, if you don't have that much time, maybe pick a couple of threads. You don't have to always do all the threads. There's 16 of you. We can hope that if everyone takes turn participating and contributing, uh, we have an engaging conversations on all the threads. Next topic for this week is slightly different, but you will see fairly also has a lot of common commonalities with what we've looked at is gap years. So here, you go to um, sort of website and uh, and pieces of media, um, and I'm asking you also to think about maybe your own experiences. Some of you may have some. So, what are your experiences been with the gap years? Either yourself or friends or students you have. Um, have you been positively? Again, not subjective to slow I apologize humanitarian action who benefits so again here it's a bit wider we've looked at NGOs we say this is different but humanitarian action is not always done through NGOs plus is sometimes a slight difference not all NGOs do humanitarian action humanitarian action we're really thinking Red Cross Oxfam uh, Amnesty International all those, those large um, they're slightly different NGOs because usually they have a different funding model so usually they appeal, they have a branding towards the general public for fundraising, and then they um, and then they target um, their action specifically to um, certain areas, right? So post-conflict, um, uh, post-natural uh, disasters, uh, things like that, or sometimes even during war, Mid Sans Frontier as well, and things like this. So obviously. Um, you know, we've had a long history as as a as a public um, in the global north with these humanitarian um, organizations for a long time. No one would have thought of um, querying the objectives, querying the mode of operations, which you'll see is historically already in the last 20 years, people have been querying the funding model because people have realized that really the percentage of money that actually gets to on terrain is very, very small. This is minimal compared to what is collected because um, they survive, their funding model is that they survive on levy of, of donations, but the levy of donation is a job in itself. So what you're finding is that most of the money that gets donated actually ends up feeding um, the machine that actually 
manages to succeed to collect that money in the first place. And that actually uh, is so huge and so costly and so hard, you know, so heavy to, to manage and operate that usually it means that out of that money, only a very little part of that operating budget actually goes to where it's supposed to go. So for about 20 years, those, those criticisms have been constant. And there's been uh, investigation journalism that have looked at, you know, some of the, of the, uh, uh, some of the, uh, yearly reports and annual reports and budgets and, and profit loss and loss accounts and things like this of, of, of humanitarian, of large multi, you know, national uh, humanitarian organizations and already uh, sort of raised the alarm. But now through all of these, you will see that it's even more than that. Now we're looking at actual disruption of the very um, canvas of what they're trying to say, right? You're there to create equity, to protect people. And all of these articles now relate to specific uh, instances where the organizations on the ground has done the opposite of what really it aims to be doing. And so a lot of people are now contesting the wider um, sort of more, um, uh, way they're operating. Um, yeah, they always consider modus operandi that not only are they funding in, in this way that's counterproductive, but that now maybe we don't actually control what happens on the ground and then on the ground maybe they are disrupting more than they're helping. And the question for you on that thread is, in light of these scandals, how can we um, keep faith in imagine an organization and the way they are run on terrain? Can the work be salvaged? Do you see them as aligning in a sustainable way in the definitions of global educations we have examined? Keep in mind the global north versus global south biodynamics, which is going to be very apparent in all of these articles anyway. Okay, and then I once you've done that, don't jump right there because I've sort of given you the you know, a, a, a way to expand your reflection, but I've dug um, some resources and some, uh, these are fairly light, they tend to be not too long, apart from the first one, which is actually almost a journal article, uh, but in short format, and it's fully posted on the web. Um, possible solutions in terms of ethics and ethical boundaries, rectifying power inequity, and then you've got two further pieces that um, give some possible so solutions as well. Uh, and my questions for you there, if you get all the way there, this is less essential because you're, you're down the core of the rest and maybe you just want to read the, the, some of the solutions suggested. But if you have time, uh, what are your reactions to the possible solutions um, to the current flaws in the operation of humanitarian organizations? Do you find them convincing and do you find them viable? Okay, now I'm just going to jump quickly to um, assignment three. Just want to say assignment three is a term paper. So on this occasion, I am looking at your academic writing. So it does need to be form formatted as um, as a paper, not in any other format. It does need to use um, a referencing, preferably APA, but at least consistent referencing in, of in-text citation and bibliography. You need to adopt an academic style. Um, and so avoid um, first person unless you have a reason to um, suggest and explain why you're using the first person sort of methodological approach that lead you that by that, that would be the case. Um, it's a term paper, I know that's going to scare some of you, but it's really a 1500 term paper, so I'm not going for the full scale uh, master's uh, full papers, which is really 5000 words, and we're going for um, a mini term paper. Um, so it shouldn't be too long. There's a lot to discuss. Really, my aim, again, if you're looking at this, is to make sure that everyone, even if they haven't had time to contribute on the um, on the on the weekly uh, forums, has actually immersed themselves in the readings about global competencies, has actually thought a little bit, put, put their thinking hat on, and thought, um, how do I react to um, these different views on global competencies? And so. And, and basically, what can I, what can I take away from that? So a good way to approach, I don't set your question for the, for the term paper. I'm allowing you to take slightly different angles. Uh, but a good way that I suggest to approach this assignment is to ask yourself, is the notion of global competencies useful to me in my practice? And that's a good general way to approach this. And you should be able to tackle all these sub questions. So sub questions I've suggested, and this are just suggestions you may add. Um, how are global competencies defined in the contemporary global education landscape? What is missing from the current definition? In which way are global competencies assessed? How are teachers trained about global competencies? What are some of the opportunities offered by the notion of global competency? What are some of the limitations? You've seen that all this returns to the questions on the forum, returns to the, to the readings that we've done. So even if you've not been a bit rushed, even if during that week you haven't had time to completely immerse yourself on it, now this is a formal milestone in the course where you're have to go back and actually make sure that we have that you haven't missed that. 
Um, so it's not it's not too complex. It's 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 really um, it's fairly summative. I have to 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 to, to admit on on this assignment. But this is a, a large conceptual sort of section of this course. Um, so we have to make sure that you really had a chance to immerse yourself and then demonstrate to me that really you've immersed yourself in it. And you will draw different things from it. You will be able to have different uh, reactions to what you're doing and use different offers and highlight different things because we've looked at a variety of things. Um, and you will have different opinions. That's totally normal. But I want you to be able to support all that with the use of literature. Okay, so I wish you a good week. We're going to see each other on Thursday for a collaborate session on this week's topics and i will also try and do a little video recap i don't know if i have time to know but i might do it tomorrow a little video recap on um, the virtual um the questions in the virtual form for week five which you've all completed okay i oh, will some of you completed, so not all of you but some of you uh, on that front i'm not obviously it's not assessed um so it's always opens uh Pandora's box. If I don't assess, you don't feel it's compulsory. It's not compulsory, but I can guarantee you the more you immerse yourself um, in, a, in the virtual questions which I ask, the easier you're going to find the assignments. And take this one, for example, if you've actually done this pretty well, you'll be able to go back to your thoughts, your comments, the readings that you've done, and use it directly in the assignments. Um, so the more you, um, you know, the, the try and align this, the, the virtual the questions of virtual form really lead you. Um, it's not time wasted. It's things that you can reuse and that leads to uh, some of the assessment itself. So um, I wish you a good week and I'll see you soon on Thursday. And uh, I hope all is going well. And don't hesitate to email me if you've got any questions. Have a good night.